Welcome back everyone, this is the State of the Nation. Recently, you saw how Indian External Affairs Minister S. Jai Shankar came to Sri Lanka saying India has good news to tell us. So what was that good news? Well, basically, they will say to the IMF that uh, India is willing to restructure the debt they have on Sri Lanka. Afterwards, he held a media, media briefing with the president present and there he gave some indication of what India would like to do as we go on. Well, not to be an ungrateful buffoon, but basically India will inject itself uh, into Sri Lankan affairs, especially in the energy sector. As the Indian government is hoping to milk the best projects that are available in Sri Lanka, piggybacking on this economic crisis. Now, we also heard nuances of our neighbour to, uh, to the north indicating their interest in implementing the 13th Amendment, with which the current president is proceeding right now. Now, these are serious matters. As I mentioned last week, when we are at our lowest, we see the vultures roaming around our rotting carcass, hoping to grab the biggest chunk. On the other hand, the US is pushing us not to be self-sufficient and be an anti-China soldier in their Cold War against China. Each and every country that came to Sri Lanka wanted something. This is why I tend to think, did we really have any real friends worldwide who genuinely wanted to help us at our lowest point? Or did they help us hoping to get the best deal for them? Well, let's get some uh, insights into how global affairs will impact Sri Lanka. And for that, joining me now is former Foreign Minister Ruhita Bugalagaman. Good to see you, uh, sir. Thank you very much for your time. Now, with the Sri Lankan economic crisis thickened, many countries, uh, Foreign Minister, especially India and the US, have tremendously increased their presence and engagement in this country. Now, some would even argue that the US backhandedly orchestrated the crisis of 2022 that resulted uh, in us being in this state. Let's, uh, for the moment, leave that aside until we get more evidence. But, uh, Foreign Minister, what exactly do you see in the recent engagement of these countries that could be a potential threat to our sovereignty and our affairs? Or is this engagement something positive? Uh, we have to look at my the international arena in terms of being supportive of a country like that of Sri Lanka. We should not run into sometimes wild conclusions merely because there is power play between giants in the world, if you really uh, term that word with a greater or a detailed definition. The greatest uh, rise in the 21st century lies in Asia. The economic power that is now getting galvanized and also concentrated in the whole world lies as a foundation support coming from the Asian continent. We command uh, the, about half of uh, the world's population. Along with that, we have the giants in Asia like that of China, India and Russia. They are all countries located in the Asian continent. Therefore, when it comes to power play, we are in a very vibrant area or a location that is registering some type of currents, sometimes at high strength or sometimes in terms of in adverse manner. But we have to have a foreign policy that can manage these developments. That is the beauty of having a very seasoned uh, along with that a mature foreign policy administration in a country like that of Sri Lanka. We have to get the best heat out of these developments that have taken place with alliances forming large between India and that of US. They are a very strong alliance that I see. Today the technological transfer has been encouraged between US and India. Thereby, we will have to benefit out of all these locations that get centered with India and I look at that we have to play it not with any optimism, uh, but also with cautious. Uh, arrangements in terms of our individual bilateral relations. Uh, yes, indeed, uh, makes a lot of sense. Now, uh, Foreign Minister, Sri Lanka has opted to uh, be a non-aligned um, state and in my opinion it hasn't brought significant benefits for this, uh, to this country. Now, amidst this crisis, 
Do you uh, do we still need to entertain that idea, or should we opt for a better version uh, of our foreign policy? What we termed as non-aligned, I think, is a bit of wasted word over the last several decades. Non-alignment was a need at a time when there was two sides in the world politics. That was the USSR dominance, along with that of the US dominance that was having the free enterprise and democracy and name it in terms of more uh, liberal world affairs. Now that period is gone and today we had look at how best we could align ourselves in terms of national interest being protected, promoted and safeguard along with that economic prosperity for our people. So what is the policy that we can pick? And today we don't have to go into European uh, subcon uh, the continent or across the Atlantic to seek our prosperity. We have the prosperity right at the end of our boundaries. We have a closer link with uh, India which should get for the further promoted and along with that behind India is uh, China in terms of a geographical uh, demarcations. So we have the size that matters to help us out in the current context and we do not have to call this non-aligned. What we have to say is we have to be aligned in terms of our national priorities so that we our prosperity lies in terms of having economic ties with India. Why not we do that? irrespective of the world opinion getting cast in terms of we are, whether we are aligned or non-aligned. What we have to do is we have to pick our friends in terms of our need. If not for our friends at times of need, I do not think we would have been out of the woods uh, in the last six months. Today we are reaching more towards greater stability from where, where we were and we have to now pick and see who helped us to come that way, that the road forward. So that means our way forward lies in now picking a very strong foreign policy approach in terms of finding the correct partnership. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, sir, now China. We see that the Sri Lankan government's lackluster approach to China despite what the foreign minister says uh, that they are engaging uh, with China. But uh, we don't see a real push to engage China in the current affairs of things. And I honestly believe that if we do so, our crisis status would not be severe as this. Um, is omitting China a prudent move? No, I don't think we should omit a major power in the world. How can it be prudent, Mahesh? If you had to omit a next, I would say, economic power that is now rising at a tremendous speed from outside our so-called scope of relationship. So why should we really omit any country for that matter? China has been a major contributor towards our growth. If not for China, we wouldn't have seen some of our roadways and our economic advancement in this country. The way we used our credit that was granted to us, the loans that were given to us, so sometimes liberally, have we used it properly? That is the fault of our, our governments in office during the last two decades or so or more. Why didn't we use our channels of support and economic uh, avenues for the greater benefit of our people? What were our priorities? So therefore, we should not omit China. China has given us and they will continue to give us more in the future, I believe, because they have now virtually I understand even on the credit bilateral credit uh, package, they are prepared to look at a moratorium towards our repayment of their debt. So it's a big support for us at a time when we are struggling to get the green light from the IMF to go forward. So I think uh, China-Indian relationship also will get measured in terms of between the two countries on a bilateral level, though they have border issues, they have a supremacy issue and also they have the hegemony in terms of the Asian context. But still for all, their economic ties I believe will go from further uh, to from strength to strength and it will have a very beneficial effect if for the whole of Asia and then to the rest of the world as well. So the economic growth taking place in these two countries phenomenon and today we see the Delhi, uh, Delhi uh, uh, Mumbai rail link getting open 1200 kilometers of road uh, rail link. The fastest rail link uh, in Asia getting created sometimes maybe in between Mumbai and Delhi. But still having said that, there is growth at a tremendous speed around us. 
So, I think we have to be the beneficiaries of that growth as partners in the region. All right, we have to leave it at that. Uh, thank you very much. That was the former Minister of Foreign Affairs, Rohit Abubulagama. This is State of the Nation. Back in a moment.